I'm making an in-depth look at Wizarding World history, and this is video number two. If you want to check out video one where I dive into the 1300s to the 1500s, it's linked down below. Now it's time to take a look at the 17th century, or the 1600s, and a bit of the 18th century, or the 1700s. Before we start, I'm trying to grow my footprint on other social medias besides just YouTube, so it would be awesome if you guys could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I tweet about your favorite fandoms like Harry Potter, Avatar, Star Wars, Marvel, Hunger Games, and so much more. And you can see behind the scenes movie flame stuff on Instagram, and just some of my personal life like my dog Loki, who is the cutest dog in the world, and just some fun posts on both platforms. All of my social media platforms as well as my Patreon are linked below for easy access. If you want, give me a follow. If not, that's totally fine. So now, let's get the video started. The 1600s were a big time for the wizarding world. In Europe, the statute of secrecy was put into place, meaning wizards were forced to keep their magic a secret from muggles, which had not been the case in the past, meaning families like the Malfoy family rose up not only in the wizarding world, but in the muggle community as well. This is also where the Malfoy family got a lot of their money, making deals with muggle businesses. So putting the statute of secrecy law in, it affected the more esteemed wizarding families, and they took big losses. In the last video, we discussed how wizarding communities across the globe knew about each other in the 1300s, long before the European explorers found the new world that we now call America. But when Muggle Europeans did find the New World and began to immigrate there, more witches and wizards of European origin also came to settle in America, meaning they had a lot more interaction with the Native American witches and wizards, which were the people that the last video primarily focused on. Just like their Muggle counterparts, the European witches and wizards had a variety of reasons for leaving their countries of origin. Some were driven by a sense of adventure, but most were actually running away sometimes from persecution by muggles, sometimes from a fellow witch or wizard, and also some running away from wizarding authorities. The latter sought to blend in among the increasing tide of muggles, or hide among the Native American wizarding population, who were generally welcoming and protective of their European brethren. However, it became clear that the New World was going to be a much harsher environment for witches and wizards than the Old World they left behind, and there are three main reasons for this. First, like their muggle counterparts, they had to come to a country with few amenities except for those they made themselves. Back home, all they had to do was visit the local apothecary to find necessities for potions. But in the New World, they had to forage unfamiliar magical plants to find what they were looking for. There were also no established wand makers either, because as I said in the last video, wands were created by Europeans, and Native Americans did nothing but wandless magic, because they didn't know anything else. On top of that, Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, which would one day rank among the greatest magical establishments in the world, was at the time no more than a rough shack containing two teachers and two students. If you want more info on Ilvermorny, I made an in-depth video on the school which I'll link below. Secondly, the actions of their fellow muggles made the non-magical population of most wizards' homelands look lovable, but not only had conflict developed between the immigrants and the Native American population, which struck a blow at the magical communities, but their religious beliefs made them deeply intolerant of any trace of magic. These muggles who despised magic were happy to accuse other muggles of having magical abilities with the smallest amount of evidence, and New World witches and wizards were right to be extremely wary of them. The last, and probably the most dangerous problem encountered by witches and wizards who had just arrived in the New World, were scourers. As the wizarding community in America was small, scattered, and secretive, it did not have any form of law enforcement. This left a hole that was filled by a band of wizarding mercenaries of many foreign nationalities, who formed a very feared and brutal task force committed to hunting down not only criminals, but anyone who might be worth some gold. As time went on, the scourers became increasingly corrupt. Far away from the jurisdiction of their native magical governments, many indulged a love of authority and cruelty unjustified by their mission. Such scourers enjoyed bloodshed and torture, and even went so far as trafficking their fellow wizards. The numbers of scourers multiplied across the New World in the late 17th century, and there is evidence that they were not above passing off innocent muggles as wizards to collect rewards from gullible non-magic members of the community. The famous Salem Witch Trials of 1692-93 were a tragedy for the wizarding community. Wizarding historians agreed that among the so-called Puritan judges, or the muggles who despised and went after anything they thought was magical, there were at least two known scourers among them who were paying off feuds that they had developed while in America. 
A number of the dead were indeed witches, even though they were innocent of the crimes they had been arrested for. Others were merely muggles who had the misfortune to be caught up in the general hysteria and bloodlust. The Salem witch trials were significant within the magical community for reasons far beyond the tragic loss of life. Its immediate effect was to cause many witches and wizards to flee the New World, and many more to decide against locating there. This led to interesting variations in the magical population of North America, compared to the population of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Up until the early decades of the 20th century, there were fewer witches and wizards in the general American population than on other continents. Pureblood families in Europe who were well informed through wizarding newspapers about the activities of both Puritans and Scourers rarely left for America. This meant there was a far higher percentage of Muggleborns, or Mudblood Witches and Wizards in the New World than elsewhere. So because of this, Witches and Wizards often went on to marry Muggles, and with so little pureblood families around in North America, this meant that there was far less focus on pureblood ideology that has dogged much of Europe's magical history. Perhaps the most significant effect of the Salem Witch Trials was the creation of the Magical Congress of the United States of America in 1693, predating the Muggle version of the American government by pretty close to a century. Known to all American witches and wizards by the abbreviation of Makuza, it was the first time that North American wizards came together to create laws for themselves, effectively establishing a magical world within a Muggle world. Makuza's first task was to put the Scourers on trial for betraying their own kind, and those convicted of murder, wizarding trafficking, torture, and all other manners of cruelty were executed for their crimes. However, several of the most notorious Scourers eluded justice. With international warrants out for their arrest, they vanished permanently into the Muggle community. Some of them married Muggles and founded families where magical children appear to have been blown out in favor of non-magical offspring, meaning it would be much more likely to have squibs for children, or a child born of a wizard parent but who has no magical ability, and this helped maintain the Scourer's cover. The vengeful Scourers, cast out from their own people, passed on to their squib descendants in absolute conviction that magic was real, and the belief that witches and wizards ought to be exterminated wherever they were found. American magical historian Theophilus Abbott has identified several such families, each with a deep belief in magic and a great hatred of it. These Scourer offspring scattered across North America might be one of the reasons why muggles here often seem harder to fool and hoodwink on the subject of magic than in other populations across the world. Witches live among us. We have to fight together for the sake of our children, for the sake of tomorrow. This also had major repercussions on the way this American wizarding community was governed. While that was going on on one side of the globe, Europe had their own government that was called the Wizards Council of Great Britain. But in 1707, this government was pushed aside and was replaced by the Ministry of Magic, bringing in a new era for the European wizarding world. I actually expanded a great deal on the Ministry of Magic and went over every minister from 1707 to 2020, which I'll link below with the other videos. That's all I have for you guys this week, but this Wizarding World History series will continue into the next video, where I discuss the next era of the Wizarding World, so look out for that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and more of this little dude. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.